church, won't you stand with us this morning? We're going to worship God in this place.
there's freedom in you, Lord. God, we give you praise, Lord. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul.
God, we believe you can do miracles, God. God, we believe there's nothing that you can't do.
moved right. mountains, Lord. That's right. In the darkness hour, you're with us. You walk us through the fire when no one else is there. You're mighty, Lord. That's right. You're mighty. Mm. Woo! Yeah. Oh, we just praise you. Yes, Lord. Oh, consume us with your fire, Holy Father. We praise your mighty name. Uh, Mountains move. Oh, oceans are parted. The dead rise. The lost. Oh, praise you, God, are saved.
Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we should praise you. God, we we'll give you our hallelujah, Lord. God, you are worthy, Lord. What a great God you are.
praise but you God God we don't have much but we give you worship Lord we don't have much but we give you a hallelujah Lord God we give you praise Lord God we give you worship Lord you are a great God hallelujah Lord God what an awesome God you are hallelujah well thank you for worshiping with us this morning Connection Church, if you just like to take the next few minutes to uh, uh, greet those around you, go find somebody new you haven't seen before, uh, lately or ever, and just uh, welcome them here.
Pride Connection Church, if you want to make your way back to your seats, that would be wonderful. And go over a few different announcements as we, uh, as we jump into some things here. How's everybody doing today? Doing pretty good? Hey, you guys made it through a really, really chilly week, so congratulations. You survived the winter storm. I think it's funny how many days off school they got. Come on now, adults, you know, you know. We were going to school in this weather out there. These kids today, they're soft, they're weak. <laughs> but it's like if, if we didn't get at least seven or eight inches, we were at school, you know we were. Anyhow, you guys got the bulletin, let's look through it. What do we got coming up here? We've got, uh, we got a new series starting next week, looking forward to that. On the Lord's Prayer, going to be good as we get ready for the week of fasting and prayer coming up February 4th through the 8th. So uh, that week there, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday um, of that week, we spend extra time in prayer. We have the church open all day. You guys can come in starting at 8.30 in the morning all the way through uh, 4.30 in the afternoon, uh, you can drop in whenever you want. That's not to say you have to come and stay here all day. That would, be, that would be a lot. But you can just drop in for like 15 or 20 minutes or something. Use the space. We'll have worship music playing. Because uh, I know sometimes it can uh, just be nice to break the routine. This week gives a chance for that uh, to, uh, to come in and pray. And then in the evenings, we're going to be praying, praying at 6.30 in here. That would be Monday, or excuse me, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Wednesday, we, we have our annual board meeting. And uh, we go over our business meeting. We go over some stuff in that. Uh, we got a couple new, a couple new um, positions open. You'll see right in here uh, where it talks about the board member positions. If you want to be considered for that, you can uh, submit your name. Um, but yeah, all sorts of good stuff coming up. Keep an eye on those things as always. And let's go ahead and transition into a moment of giving this morning. Uh, always, always a privilege to give unto the Lord, isn't it, church? It's a privilege. Um, it's uh, sometimes we can. <laughs> We can treat it like we're, we're paying for something, like it's a church tax or something. That's not, that's not the way we should view our, our giving at all. It is an honor and a privilege to give unto the Lord. Because I truly believe this, guys. What we give uh, here of our resources and of our time, what we give here uh, is what we get rewarded to there. Uh, we get rewarded for these things. And so uh, we want to make sure we take that serious. And let's be investing in the kingdom of God. As always, we practice godly giving, giving of our tithes and all that. We, we give the God-sized vision. We're going to be talking about that today, above and beyond. And we give the missions. Uh, all three, so, so very important to accomplish what God has called us to. And so I'm going to ask today, let's just bow our heads. Let's pray for the Holy Spirit to empower us. Because, Lord, we do make our, our declarations to you and our, our, our statements, Lord, that we, uh, we struggle sometimes with this. It can be challenging for us to turn over our resources, that money is hard to come by. We work hard for it. And uh, Lord, you know our human tendency is to want to hold tight to it. So Lord, I pray, uh, would you just help us in the next few moments uh, to practice godly giving and to open that grip on our resources. And I pray as we hand it to you, uh, Lord, that you would bless it, take it, multiply it. Lord, what we give is not gonna be enough to get the job done. We need you to come in alongside, multiply it, for the use in your kingdom. And I pray every individual that gives would experience just that fullness of, of pleasure. Lord, the pleasure of the Lord is we know, God, that we are joining you in what you've called us to do. Uh, reward us for that, both here in this life and on into eternity. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Always good to be at church. We love it. I wanted to begin this morning by, uh, by asking a couple personal questions. This has absolutely no bearing or any spiritual or, or uh, implications at that level at all. Okay, let me just say that right up front. It doesn't have anything to do with that, but uh, it's going to help me out personally. Three-part question here. I'm, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand as they apply to you. It's kind of like a congregational survey I'm doing here to, to help me. Okay, here we go. First question is this. I would like to see your hand up nice and high if and only if you put up Christmas decorations inside your house this year. Let me see. Who put up Christmas decor? I'm just wondering here. Okay, all right, all right. That's, that's a pretty good number. I'm going 85%. Okay, that's, that's probably a pretty good, pretty good number. Question number two. Okay, here's where it gets a little bit more important. Raise your hand 
<clears throat> if you have not yet taken down your Christmas decorations, okay, let me see your hands. They're still up. All right, all right. All right, there's still, there's still some. That number dropped significantly. Significantly. Okay, okay. Question number three. Of those who just raised your hand, how many of you would, would say that is a, a conscious decision, premeditated choice? You've chosen to leave it up. This is not because of laziness. You have it up for a reason. Okay. All right. Numbers went down even a little bit more. Okay. That's really going to help me out because I just wanted to know how weird my wife was and I need a congregational <laughs> survey to, to figure it out. She's not in here, so I can say it. Don't tell her I said that. But I just wanted to know because we still have our... It's, it's January. Is she in here? No, she's in the kitchen. She's hiding in the window. Oh, I thought you were back in kids' church. I meant, I just wanted to know how great my wife is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's January 21st, friends, and I feel like uh, it's time to get the Christmas decor down, but she won't let me do it. And so I'm like, I just wanted to know. We are in about a 5% category. That's where we're at, and I just think we need to evaluate <laughs> where... Where we, where we do our, okay. I, to, I told you it had no spiritual significance. I wasn't lying. That, that was just for me personally. Let's get into some stuff. Welcome back for week two of our uh, only two week mini series that we're in uh, where we are, we are renewing and we are refreshing our God-sized vision. The series, little mini series is titled His Plan, uh, Our Purpose. And they are both, they are both linked together. And so if you're here last week, you know that his plan is simply this, that, that we would reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is, that is God's plan. Uh, he wants that for us. He wants it for, for everyone. I, God doesn't desire anyone should perish. And so he wants the gospel to go forth and the love of Christ to shine through our life. That's, that's his plan. Um, and it is also our purpose. We are connected to that. And the way that that happens is, is we welcome the, the power and the presence of God and we build the church uh, one temple at a time. And we are the temple of God. Right? We talked about that last week. That is, that is who we are. And so one temple at a time, we build, we build the church. So all good stuff. We also took last week to uh, walk through the God-sized vision praise report. Uh, those old booklets, we should have those around. They'll be sitting around all year. We're going to keep those out so you guys can always uh, look at them. Or you know, as new people come in, they can see what we're up to. Uh, as a church, but if you were not here last week, a uh, really brief 30-second recap on that. We, we gave $61,000 to God Size Vision last year, impacting, I believe, nine countries and communities and 17 unique projects uh, with missions on top of that, another 32-plus thousand uh, brought our total up to $93,000 that we were able to give as a church beyond just our regular like tithes and stuff. And so that's pretty great. Let's give the Lord some praise for that. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, for your generosity, and thank you, Lord, for, for blessing it and multiplying it. Um, and I'm, I really am very, very proud of you guys, because I know every one of those dollars, it, it represents sacrifice. Uh, I get it. it represents sacrifice on my part, too. I'm not asking you to do something that, that I'm not doing. Um, I, I participate uh, in giving the tithe to the local church. Uh, I give extra to missions. I give extra to God-sized vision. And so I'm not asking you to do something I'm not doing. I, I believe wholeheartedly that the Lord has blessed my life and blesses my finance and blesses uh, my, my marriage and my family and all these things. It is tied to my willingness to be obedient uh, in my giving because it is a good measure of my uh, obedience just to him in general. Am I willing to trust him with my resource? And so I would encourage you to do the same this year. If you haven't started doing that, uh, work towards that. The God, uh, God will bless you for it. So we're going to continue talking about uh, his plan, our purpose throughout this week as it connects to our God-sized vision. Did you guys bring your Bible today? I hope that you did. It's always very important that we have the word of God with us. I want to see, hold them up nice and high. Let's just do it. We haven't done this for a couple weeks. Okay, all right, that's pretty good. It's probably about 80%. We'll take 80%. Always shooting for 100, though. If you don't have a Bible, let me know. I'll give you one um, because I want everybody to have access uh, to God's Word. Here at Connection Church, we're people of the Word. Amen? We are people of the Word. I repeat this over and over. I want this to be ingrained in you. What does it mean to be people of the Word? We hold God's Word in our hand and in our heart every single day. That means we hold in our hand, we read it. We hold in our heart. That means we live by it. 
That's not just a Sunday thing, that's every day. That's what it means to be a person of the word and that's what we are here. We also like to get excited about God's word. So let's give a nice, loud, excited Connection Church shout as we turn to Acts chapter 1. Very good. Acts chapter 1, go to verse 4. Acts 1, 4. The book of Acts is pretty awesome. If you have not yet read it, um, hey, that's a good goal. That's a good goal for the next month. Maybe, maybe just taking, taking a month. Bible chapters are short. There's less than 30 chapters uh, in the book of Acts. It doesn't take you that long to read. Um, I would encourage you, read through the book of Acts this, this month, and you'll be blessed to read about the acts and the actions of the early church and how the Holy Spirit moved through them to do, to do wonderful things. It's a very encouraging uh, book because it shows God's plan and our purpose being lived out. It shows us that it is possible. You guys realize God doesn't call us to impossible things. Okay? They are possible with God. We read about it right here in the book of Acts. What can be done when people honor him and follow him, even through persecution? Wonderful things can happen. Church can be built. Christ can be glorified. It is certainly possible uh, when we do it through the Lord's, uh, the Lord's way. So in verse 4 of chapter 1, you're going to see Jesus... Talking to his followers, his disciples here. These are the same disciples that saw Jesus crucified just like days earlier, basically. Um, hanging on the cross, die, the whole thing. They see, and then they see him resurrect from the grave. Now he's alive and he's walking around. This is a confusing time. Would you be just a little confused? Like, I don't even know what's going on. We are living in supernatural times and they are right in the heart of it. And after all of that, now they're sitting around a, a table in a moment of friendship and kind of like just, just communion, friendship, fellowship, and, and dining with Christ. And he speaks some really, really important words to his followers. Uh, words that, by the way, have implication for us. Okay? It would be wrong to look at what we're about to read and think this just applies to some group of people 2,000 years ago. It was, it was relevant to them, but it also has been passed down. It's, it's also very, very applicable to us, and we're going to talk about how uh, that is. So go to verse 4. Jesus said, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, uh, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? <laughs> you got to love how confused the disciples constantly are okay I mean all the time they're always asking the worst questions but you know that's kind of like we are some how many guys get confused sometime with God like he's doing stuff and you're way over here like you don't even understand it in time he unfolds it and and this is right what's going on Jesus is trying to trying to position them for what's coming next for the kingdom of God so the Holy Spirit is poured out and they're like so is Israel going to be like on top then does that they're missing it so Jesus says to say, it's not for you to know the times, the dates, the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes in a cloud, hid him from their sight. Now, how many of you guys would have liked to see that happen? Who thinks that would have been cool? Man, that would have been awesome. I hope when we get to heaven, we get to like step into these moments. Does it like that? Like I think that all the time. Every time I read a Bible story, I'm like, when I get to heaven, if heaven's perfect, and I'm pretty sure it is, we better be able to step into these moments because I think that would be so amazing to see the ascension of Christ and all that. But anyway, we're going to spend some time this morning in the Acts 1-8 model. It's what creates the framework for our God-sized vision, keeps us on, keeps us on track. Um, but before we break that down into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts and talk through that, uh, I also wanted to give you just a real quick overview of what happened in the book of Acts with the early church. Because they just got this amazing declaration that they're going to receive power and all this is going to happen. Um, but what they do with it, in case you haven't read it before, uh, let me just share this with you. And I'm going to rapid fire these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different portions of scripture. I'm going to talk quick. Don't try to turn there, okay? <laughs> you'll, you'll miss it. Acts 1.14. After this happened, we're told they all joined together constantly in prayer. Prayer is important, amen? 
Prayer is important. They got to work. They began praying. Acts 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and come to rest on each of them. And all of them, not some of them, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and then began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Fast forward a few verses to 2. 42 and 47, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with all at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers, they were together. They had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God. And enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number uh, daily those who were being saved. How many of you think that sounds like a church you'd want to be a part of? Four of you. (laughs) Okay. That's good. We we try to model after that, by the way. That's what we're going for uh, here at Connection Church. So I hope that's a church you want to be a part of because we're trying to do it. Um, And that's, that's that's so awesome. But then, as often happens... How many of you guys have noticed this pattern? When you start to move in the direction of God and the power of God, the enemy rises up and tries to drag down. You guys notice that in your own life? Hey, that means you're following a biblical pattern. So this is, this is what happens. Acts 4, 18 through 19, you got some religious people. They come into the mix. Here's what it says. Then they uh, called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes? To listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help but speaking about, speak about what we have seen and heard. And then in Acts 5.18, they were arrested. The apostles, uh, they were arrested. They were put in public jail. Acts 5, 41 and 42, the apostles left the Sanhedrin, uh, I love this, rejoicing, because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of Jesus. Day after day in the temple courts, From house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. And then in Acts 8, 1 and 4, on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles, they were scattered throughout all Judea and Samaria. And those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. I love that. That's just a little snapshot of what we have happening in the beginning of the book of Acts. And I look at that and I think, man, that's, that's so cool because those people preached where they went. They preached to somebody else who then preached to somebody else who then preached to somebody else. And then a whole bunch of faithful followers later comes us, 2,000 years later, sitting in this room because people were willing to faithfully continue to preach the good news. How many of you think for somebody preached the good news to you? Amen? Wow, I am. I can't imagine what my life would look like if I didn't know Jesus. I'll tell you right now, anything good that I have or anything good that comes from my life is because of Jesus, the Holy Spirit moving through me. That's it. Because in and of myself, I'm a mess. You probably are too. (laughs) That's the way that it goes. And so we get a promise, a plan, a purpose, all revealed in Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 8. We're going to hone in on that this morning. Look back at it if you would, Acts 1, 8. Here's what it says. This is God's plan and promise. But you uh, will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. That's a promise. That's a plan. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. That is God's intention for your life. It is worthy of pursuit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And then we get our purpose revealed. You will be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. The outermost parts of this globe, you will be my witnesses my witnesses. And that's the purpose that we live with. And, I, and I, I love that. So I would just ask you this question in all simplicity this morning. I would just say this. Are you living on purpose? Are you living on purpose? Are you, are you doing that? Are you taking God's game plan seriously and doing something with it? And I certainly hope you are. That might be a question you need to take to the Lord in your prayer time this week. Because it's really easy to just give a knee jerk. Yeah, sure. <laughs> But sometimes the reality, when you really evaluate your life, might prove differently. And it's worth focusing in on, praying about, letting the Holy Spirit 
speak to you about. But that's, you know, game plans are important things, aren't they? They're pretty important. I got to thinking about my old Indiana Hoosiers. You guys know I'm a helpless Indiana Hoosier college men's basketball fan. Um, and so I'm going to take a minute to talk to you about them uh, because I like to. And so I'm going to. Uh, they're, you know, I root for them when they're great, which unfortunately is not very often, and when they're horrible, which has been way too often over the past couple decades. Um, but this year, thankfully, they haven't been horrible to watch. Like they've won some, they've won some games. They're not, they're not horrible. But that's as long as they stick to the coach's game plan. This is what I've noticed. If they stick to the plan, they're enjoyable to watch. When they don't, the wheels come off and things start to go wrong. And here's the way this, this goes uh, for our team, my team this year. They are a horrible three-point shooting team. Okay? Horrible. Abysmal, even, you could say. Uh, who wants to guess how many Division I college men's basketball teams there are? You want to guess how many? 361 teams in Division I, 361. Most of those schools are schools you have never heard of before. Weird names, who would even know that they're, you know, but they are, they're in the 361. As of a couple weeks ago when I looked and I pulled this up preparing, uh, do you know what Indiana, <laughs> Indiana was uh, in three-point shooting? 351 out of 361 teams. Wow, right? When I said abysmal, I was not kidding. That is really bad, okay? Really, really bad. Um, but, and you would think when you're that bad, they would just be an absolute trash team. Like, they certainly cannot have won any games this entire season. Not actually true. They've actually won double digits already, and they got some wins on their butt. You know how they've done it? They are a top 25 team in two-point shooting, Okay? Top 25, that's not too bad. That means if you get close to the bucket, you can actually put the ball in the hoop. Go figure, right? And so there you go. Does anybody want to take a wild guess what the coach's game plan is for the Indiana Hoosiers this year? Here's probably the way the conversation goes. Stop turning the ball over, first and foremost. You got to have the ball to do something with it, productive. Don't turn the ball over. Number two. Don't take contested three-point shots because you're horrible at them. Stop shooting out there, right? That's number two. Number three, get the ball inside as close to the hoop as possible so our elite big men can do what they do and dunk the ball, okay? That's it. That's the game plan. Does that seem complicated to you? No. <laughs> it doesn't seem all that complicated to me either. Um, unfortunately... I'll tell you what happens because I have watched every single game. This is the way that it goes. Somewhere during the game, the Indiana players lose their ever-loving mind, okay? And like they're in the middle of playing, and this is the way that it goes. The defense, knowing how bad they are at shooting outside that perimeter, starts to give them some space. Catch this tie-in and see if you can follow me here tempting them to do what they ought not do, right? <laughs> and they're like, because a lot of them just, I don't know what happens in the middle of the game. They're like, I'm open, right? And they, they get the shot and they just start chucking up three after three after three, miss, clank, air ball, brick, like everything. It barely ever goes in. It's so predictable. And so what starts out with a five or six point lead ends up being a double digit hole that we have to try to climb out of because they got tempted to do what they shouldn't be doing. They forgot the coach's game plan and ultimately they forgot their identity of who they are as a team. You guys figure out where I'm going yet? <laughs> All right, so... Did you say you want your Christmas Day core taken down? <laughs> yeah, no, we're way past that. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Thankfully, this is not one of those times that I've got to call a timeout for us as a church and say, we're, we're, we're taking shots we shouldn't be taking and we're, we've lost our identity. That's not the moment we're in as a church. Thankfully, uh, God is blessing. Great things are happening. But that doesn't mean... Guys, that doesn't mean we shouldn't review the game plan from time to time. Amen? Like, it's, it's important. we got to review the game plan, know what the coach's plan is. By the way, I'm not the coach. He's the coach, right? And so we got to know the coach's plan for us. And the reality is we cannot afford to forget that if we call on the name of Jesus as our Lord and Savior... If we make the conscious decision that we are going to do our very best to turn from sin and follow Jesus, 
If we say, I want to advance and grow the kingdom of God over my own kingdom, that means we have opposition, right? There's opposition. The enemy is constantly going to be coming against us, trying to get us to compromise, you know, call in sick, kick back in apathy, quit altogether. I mean, all the stuff. That's what the enemy does. Steal, kill, destroy. And so if you call in the name of Jesus, you better get used to the battle because it's part of being on the team. But we can't forget who we are. Amen? Can't forget who we are. So let me speak this over your life as we are in the huddle today. Out there is the, out there is the game, right? We're in the huddle this morning. Let's say this, don't forget who you are. You are a son or a daughter of the King of Kings. You're a co-heir with Jesus Christ himself in your inheritance, a co-heir with him. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit of God. You are recipients of the awesome, unstoppable, mountain-moving power of God. You actually are beneficiaries on a day-to-day basis, a beneficiary of the unending grace and mercy of God. You've been made in his image. That means the, the attributes and the character of God has been wired into you that now all you have to do is make the choice, the choice to Walk after Jesus. You're just going to obey the word of God and walk after Christ. And those godly attributes come to life in you. That's the beauty of being a child of God. Uh, you got to remember who you are. Amen? Don't forget it. That's who you are. The enemy will try to get you to forget that. And he comes with all of his little ploys and tactics to drag you down and sin and temptation and all this stuff. It's to get you to forget who you really are. And if he can succeed there, he can get you to do anything. So don't forget. And almost as important as remembering who you are, it's remembering uh, what you're called to do. What's the game plan? We've got to remember our purpose. So very important. Um, because God's game plan for us is the only way that the world experiences uh, his grace and his forgiveness. Uh, his game plan. We have to do it his way. And his way is in Acts 1.8, that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon us. We will receive power and then we'll, we will become witnesses everywhere we go. That's, that's the plan. That's the purpose. And I hope you understand this, guys. Let this sink in for a second. Listen, there's no plan B. That's it. God has one singular plan, that you would be his, his mouthpiece, his hands and feet, showing the love of Christ to this world. There is no plan B. Um, understand the next time, the next time Jesus comes isn't going to be like the first time. The first time he came was to usher in grace unto the world. And we live in a season of grace, don't we? We can call in the name of Jesus whenever we want. You know, we can mess up and we say, Lord, oh, geez, I stepped off the path. I need your grace and your forgiveness. The love of God and the grace of God is right there. Um, but Jesus is coming again. And it's not going to be to bring grace. It's to bring judgment. That's what we read in God's word. The season we are in now, God has designated us to be the ones that would preach the gospel faithfully. That we would speak his name, be his hands and feet. There is no plan B. And so we got to take our, our purpose very, very seriously and make sure that every single day we're living on purpose to advance the kingdom of God in every arena of our life. I said this, I believe last week, I think it was last week, uh, that you're going to be able to do things that I cannot do because you are in environments that I will never be in. Like, I'm not going to sit around your dinner table every day with your family. I'm not going to be in your workplace. I'm not going to be in your classrooms. You are in unique spaces be in them on purpose. Amen? We got to keep that in mind. So the goal of God, the plan of God is obtainable. The Holy Spirit is alive in you. Uh, he wants to do the things that only he can allow you to do, like rise above sin and temptation, lead your family and God wisely. Walk and understand the word of truth and how it applies to your life so you can live it out. These are, these are things the Holy Spirit wants to do. But he also wants to increase your boldness. <laughs> Some of you need that. Sometimes I need that. Sometimes it's easy to be a little bit shy. How many introverts we got out there? <laughs> a few of you, yeah. I can be a little introverted too. You know, there are times where the Lord says, hey, go talk to that person. I'm like, eh, I don't want to. Because I'm introverted sometimes. I don't feel like putting myself out there. 
I just don't want to. But here's what, here's what I need to continue to remind myself of. It's not just about who I am. Do you know why? Because the Holy Spirit is a real person and he's alive in me. It's no longer just about me. Matter of fact, I said when I received Jesus, I die to myself, I become alive in you. So who is the Holy Spirit and who is Jesus? Are they introverted or are they willing to speak up truth and hope and life? And so I need to make sure in my life, it's not just about what I want or just about how I feel in any given moment. If I'm in that environment and the Lord captures my attention to touch somebody, then I need to let the Holy Spirit and the power of Christ rise up in me and say, well, what would he do? Well, that's a good old what would Jesus do thing, right? Hey, we should remember that. Let's keep on rolling. <clears throat> this season, I believe that God has a, he has a big purpose and a plan for us. We wrap it around our God-sized vision, um, at least for our church. That's, that's a big focal point for us. And I want to make sure as a church that we, that we keep that central because it helps us make sure that we don't just invest everything that we have in ourself. And that's easy to do. You know why? Because there's always more areas of the church that need renovated money dumped into them. Okay? You just walk around the building. They're all over the place. We could spend money on this facility all year long, and we still wouldn't come to an end of what needs done. Um, God-sized vision helps us make sure we don't do that. Right? What else? Uh, there's, always, there's always more salaries that need paid and you know, staff that could be hired. There's always more outreach that needs done, facilities to keep up on. All that stuff is there. And the Jerusalem category of our God-sized vision helps some of those things take place. But that can't be all we do. Because God hasn't called us just to Jerusalem. He's also called us to Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. God-sized vision helps us kind of keep our focus on that. And so how about this? With the remainder of our time... And we're looking pretty good this morning. For the remainder of our time, I want to just talk through a few of these, few of these areas, what we want to see and why it's important. Sound good? You guys still with me? Turn to your neighbor, make sure they're awake. Yeah, look them in the eyeballs. Get them awake. Good? Everybody awake? Good stuff. All right, starting with Jerusalem. Let's hit Jerusalem first. <clears throat> Jerusalem is uh, obviously near and dear to all of our hearts because it's our home base. We define it as our connection, church, family, and facility. It's not hard to get excited about investing in Jerusalem. I, I, I get that. Um, and we definitely make that a priority. And so uh, this year, our big project is we want to renovate the kids' wing. That sound like fun? I think that sounds like a lot of work, but it could be, it could be fun too. We want to renovate that, at least improve it um, by doing some key things. Because if you have walked back there any time recently, you're going to notice a couple things. Um, you're going to notice it doesn't look very kid-friendly. When you walk through the hallways and things, during our vacation Bible school time, it's great. We have all the decor up, and it's like clearly it's a kid's wing, and it's wonderful. But then we take it down, it's like womp, womp, you know, like there's, there's nothing kid-friendly about it at all. And so we want to change that. We want to address that um, so that kids really feel excited to come into that space, and it's colorful, and it looks like it was made uh, for them. And so we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to take down those horribly ugly uh, chandeliers that are back in the kids' center that just keep getting hit with dodgeballs. Now they're like all crooked and three, you know, the things are out. And like, we're going to take those down, put something a little better up. We're going to move the tech table. Right now, the, all of our tech equipment sets in the middle of the room on folding, chair, or folding tables. That's not a great plan, okay? So we want to like move that back, free up the room, create a designated safer spot for that stuff. Um, and other things, whatever else comes to mind as we improve that space. So I'm excited about that. By the way, we're going to need some help for that, <laughs> a lot of help for that, so uh, that would be really great. Um, unfortunately, um, and I don't know who approved this, but, but uh, Pastor Matt decided he was going to leave us like, at the wrong moment <laughs> because you know, we need all your help back there. We're like, what? Who signed off on that, Pastor Matt? Man, what's going on? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so we're going we're gonna to do that. We're also going to continue to do our investment in our kids and youth. Um, all in, we call our all in camp. We want to make sure that every kid and youth that wants to go to summer camp uh, gets a, a sponsorship to help reduce that cost because it can be expensive. And so we're going to continue to do that this year. Uh, we are going to uh, do our building expansion fund. Any other project the Lord brings to our heart, we want to try to make happen because we want to reach, uh, invest, and disciple people from this location. Um, this is where the Lord called us. We're here. 
and we can't neglect it. I love to reach the lost. I love to reach around the world and do all the things that excites me. I love those things. But if that comes at the neglect of our church families and, and facility, that's a problem. And, and so the Jerusalem area helps us with that. I also want to make sure that we don't just get people saved and then abandon them to the wolves of this world. We want to see them discipled. Okay, That takes environments to do that in. Uh, we want to make sure our, our kids and youth don't just... You know, don't just get lost in the mix. We want to make sure they establish a love for Jesus and a love for the word of God. Like that takes investment. And so these are things we're doing. Um, And I would just say this, when it comes to his plan and our purpose, Jerusalem matters. Amen? Jerusalem matters. Okay. It's good to know. Let's keep rolling. Doesn't stop there. Because now we got Judea. What's up with Judea? We would say this is helping local churches and church multiplication. That's what it's all about. We want to find ministries. We want to find those who are doing the work of God and come alongside them and empower them. And so I'm hoping this year we ramp this area of our God-sized vision up a notch. So thankful uh, that God has blessed us here. It's been a long, long time since we've had to pick which bill gets paid. Okay? And so we're like, well, we can pay the water or we can pay the electric. Which one do we want to do? It's been a long time since, since that's been the case here at the church. We pay the bills. We invest in ministries. We position our ministries for success, resourcing them and giving them the ability to do outreach. We do all those things, and that's great. But I'm just telling you right now, there are plenty of churches out there that is not their story. Okay? They're struggling. They're trying to push forward into the things of God and be faithful where they've been planted, um, but they're struggling. And so this Judea area helps us to identify some of these that are ripe with potential. If the potential's there, they're, they got a good heart, they're tapping into the power of the Holy Spirit, they're read, like they're ready to go, but they're just, they need, a, they need a push, they need a blessing. And it helps us be able to empower them. It also helps us dismantle some of the us versus them deception within Christendom, right? Because a lot of times people think it's like we're against the other churches that are out there. And that is just plain flat out not the way it goes. We're all on the same team. If you're honoring the word of God, we are on the same team. And I want to see, like, I want to see your church successful, just like I want to see ours successful. So uh, the way that looks is we want to identify even churches that are not in the assemblies of God, uh, local, local churches that are, again, ripe with potential, ready to do ministry. And we want to be able to give them a church grant to help push that ministry forward as well. Uh, we'll invest in church plants this year, invest in all sorts of things. So it's going to be fun because when it comes to his plan and our purpose, Judea matters. Amen? Yeah. Amen. That was weak. Judea matters. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And yeah, we're getting there. Judea matters. Amen? Yeah. I'll take it. And we move on to cross-cultural and community partnerships. This would be our Samaria area. Equally important. These are all important, okay? There's no one above another. They are all important. We can get tunnel vision sometimes uh, in, the, in the church. We can start to only want to minister to people and reach people that look like us, that talk like us, that think like us, or are willing to believe like us. Then we're like, all right, that's where we're at. But, but that's not the pattern we have. Right here in Acts 1.8, it said, yeah, go to Jerusalem. Hit your home base. Go to Judea. Those are all the people that probably look like you, sound like you. That's your Judea. They're, they're in your community. Um, but then he said, I also call you to Samaria. The people that don't look like you, don't sound like you, don't think like you. You got to go there too. And to the uttermost parts of the, to the earth. And, and so we take Samaria seriously by saying we want to make sure we're reaching out in our community and uh, doing that to the best of our ability. We cannot afford to turn our back on, on, on anybody, whether they ever step foot in this facility or not is irrelevant. It's how well are we doing at honoring God's call uh, to reach them with the love of Christ. So that happens in community partnerships that are faith-based. You know, that, that's, that's great. We do some of those, certainly. Uh, we want to empower them to do what they're doing for the kingdom of God. But it also happens in other, other community organizations that, that maybe aren't faith-based, but they are trying to build up and strengthen our community. We want to come alongside some of them as well and say, you know what, we are with you in this. We want to strengthen this community. But everything we do, we do because we are compelled by the love of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're about. And we want to, we want to partner with you. And so that's going to continue to happen 
just like it did uh, last year. So that's our goal, because when it comes to his plan and our purpose, Samaria matters. Amen? Amen. 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 Last, last but not least, is the uttermost parts. So very important. And we define that as reaching out with acts of compassion uh, and evangelism, uh, both. And it's so, so very important. And we do that all the time, uh, even outside of our God-sized vision with our missions. We have about 30 missionaries and organizations. Every month we're supporting, continue in your faithful missions giving. Um, but within God-sized vision, I love it because it's been empowering us to do greater things, things that we would never be able to do, take on projects that we would not have been able to accomplish. Uh, the biggest one that we are, that we are doing is a three-year partnership with Bill and Lena Schrader in Peru. Uh, we already gave them 10000 last year. For the next two years, it'll be another 10000 each to invest in uh, their ministry that they're building in Monte Saloon. And the cool thing is we're going to be on site. I believe we've got 15 uh, people, participants, going on our missions trip out of this body. And we're going to be there working hand in hand, seeing, touching these people in the name of Jesus to see where we are investing. And, and I just, I cannot wait for that. Please, church, be in prayer for that for us. Don't strand us out there. Like we we want to go and be fruitful for the kingdom of God. And so just add that to your prayer list, that we would be fruitful, that God would keep us protected in all that we do. Uh, and so we're, we're excited about that coming up. And I also want to challenge you in this, this area of reaching the uttermost parts. I want to challenge you to have a missionary mindset this year. A missionary mindset, because missionaries are cool people. <laughs> if you ever had a chance just, just to talk with them, they're, they're just wired uh, to make impact for the kingdom of God. And the way that they do that is they are very intentional at building relationship and friendship with people. Uh, they're very intentional about trying to find ways to turn conversation towards Jesus. They are very generous with their time and with their friendship. They invest their resource to advance the kingdom of God above their own kingdom. That's the way that they live. It's their calling to do. But we can all live with that mindset. Every single one of us. A missionary mindset is the way the Lord actually desires us to live. And if we would just start seeing our environments, our daily environments as our own mission field. I know that God's going to do great things to that. So that's a challenge for us this year. When it comes to his plan and our purpose, the uttermost parts matter. Amen? Amen. Okay, one last thing I want to hit before we close. And you guys are looking lazy daisy today. I'm telling you, you guys are like, is he still talking? He's still up there. Stay awake. You can do it. Okay? You got five more minutes in you? Five minutes. Okay, I'll try to finish in five. This is important stuff. We're making a couple changes to our God-sized vision uh, for this year. Because we always want to improve things. Year one was great, but I want year two to be like awesome. I want to kick it up a notch, and I believe that we can. Um, and so this is, this is what we found. When we evaluated in our board meeting, we're talking about some things. We evaluated uh, God-sized vision 2023, year one. And we're like, this was good, this was good. But then we, we, noticed, we noticed something we just quite honestly dropped the ball on a little bit, didn't even think about it. Uh, we never set any kind of goal at all. Like there was no goal. We just, we just said, we said, be faithful in your tithe giving to the church and then just give a little more to God's size vision. Do you remember that? That's the way that we talked about it. And that's great. I still want you to be doing that. Give an extra percent or two straight to God's size vision above and beyond your tithe. That's the way we do all of these things. Keep doing that. But to not have a goal really kind of just created this, like we're just floating out there, like, well, I mean, I hope we are succeeding. Are we succeeding? Are we not succeeding? What's going on? You know, I had a lot of questions throughout the year uh, in, in that vein. So this year, uh, we're going we're gonna to set a goal, and we're going to set them quarterly, okay, quarterly goals. And then at the same time, we're making another legitimate change. Do you remember we did one God-sized vision Sunday? Uh, last year. It was probably in April, something like April, May, something like that. We did the one. We designated a greater portion of the offering to go straight to God's size vision, and we did that, and that was great, and I really enjoyed uh, that week. Well, this year, we're going to tweak that a little bit as well, um, and to go along with our, our quarterly goals, we're going to do quarterly God's size vision Sundays. So we're going to have four of them throughout the year, and we're going to switch up a little bit of how the offering goes. On those four Sundays, 
25% of everything given will go straight to God's size vision. It's not the normal 10%, but 25%. Sky's the limit. Everybody wants to dump in $100,000 in that offering, $25,000, goes straight to God's size vision. All right? Anybody rich out there? No, not, not you or me. Okay. I'm just saying, you know, you never know. The Lord might stir your heart. And so I'm just saying, sky's the limit. We can be generous as we can be and really kick those uh, up. The last week of each quarter is going to be our God sized vision offering. 25% to it. I'm, I'm really, I'm excited about that. And I believe every good goal should have a good incentive. Amen? Yeah. Otherwise, what's the point, right? And so I want to I incentive. And so here's the incentive. Um, if we meet the goal that we set each quarter, if we meet the goal for that quarter, then what we're going to do is we're going to do a bonus project, something that correlates to whatever area we're in. So the first quarter, which we're already in it, guys, is going to be our Jerusalem quarter. Do we have, do we have that slide? Did I give it to you with the, uh, with the thing? Yeah, okay. So it's hard to see right now. Um, but this is all grayed out, and then it's going to become color as we move through it. And we're going to put this in your bulletin, so you're going to see these on a weekly basis. So far, we've given, we, we've given 1380 uh, to God's size vision over the first couple weeks with a total goal for the quarter of 12-5. Okay? That's what we're trying to get for the first quarter, January, February, March. That's it. Okay? So we've got three months to do it with that final week being that God's size vision uh, offering. So I'm excited about that. We're going to attribute a bonus project to that. Haven't decided what it is yet. We're going to decide over the next couple of weeks so we can start talking that up and help just to be an incentive to keep giving faithfully. So the first, second, third quarter, 12.5 is our goal. The last quarter, because you've got year-end giving that always goes up a little bit, and I want to keep it challenging. I'm not making this easy for you guys, okay? I want to keep it challenging. We're moving that one up to 16, okay? 16,000 in the last quarter to meet that goal for the other most parts. How many guys think we can hit those goals? You believe we can. I think we can. Amen. I hope so. I hope so. Believe it. Pray for it. Pray for it. And then sacrificially give. That's what I'm going to do. Okay? I'm going to sacrificially give. Even greater than I did last year. Um, I say that every year, and I, and I mean that seriously. I'm not like tooting my own horn or patting myself on the back or whatever, but every year... I seek to give more than I did the year before because God has poured out more grace upon my life than ever before. It increases with every year. His blessing increases. I want to keep pushing, keep pushing more to missions, more to my general offering, more to whatever extra programs we're doing uh, because God's word doesn't return void. He said, we get a testament in this stuff. See if I don't prove myself faithful. And he does. He proves himself faithful every single year. And so I thought this was really neat. And I'm closing on this, this uh, last little, little sentence here. Um, I looked ahead at the calendar. So I'm like, when's the god size Vision Sunday going to, what's the last week of the quarter? And I'm flipping the calendar and I look, guess what it is? You got to love this. Easter Sunday. Mm, that's great. That's like one of our biggest attended weeks. You know, you got Christmas and Easter, right? Easter is one of our biggest, that should be one of our biggest offerings. We get to say from that day, 25% of everything that day is going straight to God's size vision. I can't wait to see what the Lord does that day as we position for what the Lord's going to do. Uh, so I'm excited about it. Um, this is, guys, this is his plan. It's his plan. This is how we're reaching, this is how we're reaching our Jerusalem and beyond, his plans, our purpose, and the Lord's going to allow us to do it. Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet. Let's close in a word of prayer today. Let's close in prayer. Seal all that the Lord has done. Amen. Go ahead and just do me a favor, would you? Would you bow your heads with me all across the room? Just bow your head and close your eyes. Let's just focus in. And some of the things we've heard today about the early church, about the way that they moved forward even through difficulties. Think about that game plan, how it's important. It's important. We don't forget who we are and what God has called us to do. Jesus, you have done great things today. You gave us an opportunity to come and enjoy your presence and without hesitation, without reservation, we were able to sing your praises loudly and, and just enjoy your goodness. Thank you for that moment.
And thank you for your word today and for, for the challenge that we have to continue to push forward. Lord, that is your heartbeat. Missions, reaching people with the gospel. It's what you desire. And I thank you, Lord, that we are, we're partnering with you in it. And I pray, God, that you would excite every single spirit in, in life that's here. Excite us to the work of your kingdom. And don't let us get pulled down just into the routine and the mundane and forget that you've called us to do great things. And Lord, I just uh, I ask that across this entire room, um, if there's anyone here that's just been, it's been struggling, it's been a really difficult uh, season that they're in, and they need you. They need you to show up in some area of their life. They've been praying. Or they're trying to be faithful, Lord. If they've been seeking you, you told us that we can come knocking, knocking at that door, and it will be open to us. I pray today. Lord, you would open the door of blessing and provision into their life. And Lord, for those that might stand in the room and they, they recognize they're not, even, they're not even in relationship with you, they're not right with you. So Lord, just in the, in the quietness of this moment, I pray you would draw their spirit. You've told us all we need to do is believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. So would you just begin to let them make that declaration Lord, that they, they choose you. They want you to be their savior redeemer the lord of their life and god i i just know as, as we do that as we as we ask you to do the things that only you can do you're happy to do it we don't have to come begging lord we just come asking and uh, lord we are we are your children so thank you and i ask as we walk out the door we're all going to step back into the complexities of our life and uh, some of them are significant. So Lord, I pray that as we, as we walk through the details of our life this week, you would help us be on mission, live on purpose, create opportunities and let us stand in your boldness to seize them. And I, I pray it all, Jesus, in your awesome holy name. Amen. Amen. Church, thanks for being here. Look forward to seeing you back next Sunday. God bless. Bye.